my name's Paul Meakin. Uh, we've had Pyrenees for 12 years now. Currently have two boys, one of which you can see here. Um, we show, and but mainly these are pet dogs. We find the breed interesting. They are a, a challenge because being a mountain dog, they have fairly independent minds. Um, they do have the ability to be trained. Um, one boy on the floor has the gold good citizen and this boy here has the silver and our old girl that we lost this year had a silver as well, good citizen. Uh, so they can be trained. However, uh, one of the interesting features of them is they tend to disappear if you take the lead off outside because everything else is far more interesting. Um, they have um, a very quick turn of speed. They do, um, do get going very quickly and hit top speed fairly quickly, chasing a deer, a rabbit or a pheasant, all of which makes it difficult for them to hear you when you're shouting at them. So we tend not to let our boys off the lead anymore. That stopped at about four months old. So we then reverted to the normal mode at the moment, which is a harness and extendable, which is where they get their running features. We do often try and get to a friend of ours who's got an enclosure that stops them from uh, escaping, which is quite useful. Or if it's snowing, we tend to let them play in the snow in a, a, a fence field um, because they've got some more interest going on. As soon as they start to lose interest in the football or something like that, the leads go back on. Pyrenean Mountain Dogs are generally white, or an off cream. <laughs> they look white, but if you run them against snow, they're not quite so, uh, not quite so white. They tend to have patches um, around the head, part way down the back, around the tail, bottom of the top of the tail. Um, they can be more or less coloured. There are white ones out there. White ones tend to suffer with lack of pigment around the nose, tend to be less black. Um, the ones with pigment, sorry, ones with colour do end up with a quite a bit good pigment on their nose and around their eyes. Um, they are an imposing large dog. They're supposed to be a giant breed. Um, therefore, they can be imposing to other dogs, they can be imposing to children, they can be imposing to people unsure of dogs. Pyrenees were originally bred as livestock guardians. Okay, they protect sheep mainly uh, in the Pyrenees, but I've, I've seen goats being protected or whatever. They are generally protection against wolves and sometimes bears in these areas. So you've got several of these dogs protecting a, a flock and they are there for bluster first off to frighten back the wolf. You know, they're a big imposing dog. When you see a mane come up, you know, they become a bigger dog. So the first plan is not to fight. Second plan is fight. So if you don't frighten them off with the first bit, you've got to be big enough to defend what you're supposed to be defending. So therefore, that's why they're a large dog. That's why they're a white dog, because they, they mix in with the sheep generally. Um, that's why they're an agile dog, because they move quickly. Um, and if you look at a, one of these that gets up and stands up and all the hackles are up, you can see a very large dog. And the plan is always to frighten off first and fight if you have to. So you're looking for a confident dog in this, and that's what you get from a, a livestock guardian, something that's comfortable with its own skin, if you like. They are generally brought up with lambs in France when they're being uh, uh, weaned, etc., in order to make sure they understand why they're there. And generally, they'll be off in the mountains with a flock of sheep on their own. So an independent dog. Sometimes you get four or five of these in terms of a large flock to look after a flock. And quite often you'll find that they'll, they'll find their own food, pheasants, rabbits, etc. Um, tend not to eat the sheep, thankfully. The 
Pyrenees and the mountain dogs, like people, have totally different, or can have totally different characters. We've got one boy here and his brother on the floor. Uh, chalk and cheese. Um, this boy is, uh, we describe him as probably the delinquent. Uh, and the, his brother on the floor is probably the studious boy. Um, this one has character, has flair, he has a presence about him. His, his brother more or less does as he's told in a better environment and therefore um, it's hard to characterise individuals. However, as a breed characteristic, they are a, um, they're a mountain dog. They have presence. They have um, a command of awareness around them. They tend not to back down. Um, they can be, in the wrong hands, an aggressive dog, which would be a shame. Um, given confrontation, they are protective of around their family and those around them. Generally, Pyrenees get on with other dogs. The larger the dog, to be honest, the better. The yappy little things that come up from underneath, aren't, they aren't particular fans on. They won't eat them, but they're not particularly interested in dogs that come up from underneath. They've got a big ruff, and quite often we've had terriers hanging off their ruff, and they just ignore them and lift their head up. Okay, now try and bite me. And all the other little dog gets is a, is a ruff. They are good with children. Um, they don't do screaming children desperately well. It's the noise, I think. Um, they tend to wander off. If they get bored with children, they walk away. My wife's nephew grew up with her old Pyrenean girl and adored her. She would lie down. Jake would lie alongside her, on her, round her. She would just lie there, quite happy. Uh, they get on rather well, well with other animals. You can see we've got seven cats. The cats tend to rule the roost. The dogs will walk away. After puppies and becoming to adulthood, they walk away rather than try and play with the cats. While they're puppies, they try and play. Um, but generally, brought up well, they're a good-natured dog. Brought up badly, they're a difficult dog because you're talking 50, 55 kilos, maybe 60 kilos of dog. That's a lot of dog to be out of control. Okay, that's the important feature. You need to be in charge of it and they need to understand who is boss. Pyrenees will take as much or as little exercise as you want to give them. The more exercise you give them, the more sleep they do at home and they're less wandering around. Are we often somewhere between an hour and an, sorry, half an hour and an hour in the morning half an hour now in the evening. It depends, some of that is on lead, some of that's on harness for running. So they get two different opportunities. You know, lead walking is, tends to be fairly fast paced in order to keep them moving. The harness work is whenever they want to go, they go. But generally, in a, in a household environment, you walk them in the morning, you walk them in the evening, and the rest of the day is either spent lying around next to you, on you, around you. 80% of the day is spent to sleep. Um, the other 20% is either walking or eating or playing around. Um, they do have energy, don't get me wrong. Um, they can go miles and miles and miles if you wish them to. We work and Pyrenees can be left on their own. We have eight or nine hours sometimes where both boys are on their own at home. Generally not a problem. Uh, we have um, neighbours and friends and relatives that can come in and let them out now and again for a wee at lunchtime maybe, but generally they sleep. If you're training a Pyrenean, the driver is food, okay? Rarely will you find them like toys. Um, this boy will like a football, but it's a yellow football. We've got a white football. He's not interested in the white football. He likes the yellow football. He likes food, the boy on the floor. Um, so that's his training vehicle. Um, you can get them, if you plonk it on the end of their nose, you can get them followed very well 
and if you do a sit or a down or whatever in an obedience class, food on the end of the nose gets them where you want them to be. It may not always be quick, but they will get there. Pyrenees have elements of what they're good at. Um, this boy can't open stair gates, he goes over them. The boy on the floor can open stair gates and uses it often. So they have different areas of expertise depending on the type of dog they are. They are not stupid. They will find most things if they want to find them. The problem with the Pyrenean is they, want, they need to have to find it. They, they need to have the want. Um, if they can't be bothered, they really can't be bothered. And often it's heels in, I'm staying put. Pyrenean Mountain Dogs are a giant breed and you should train them properly. They need to understand A, who's the boss, and B, understand what the rules are. Uh, it can be done quite happily. You know, we've got two calm boys here. They enjoy training. We take them to both obedience and we take them to ring craft. We try not to overdo the ring craft because it become, can become boring when you've got a show dog because they're often in the ring as well. So we go to obedience at the moment and I often take the two boys together and train them together. And people look at you as if you're daft, but you know, they're no different to any other dog providing you train them and have them um, look to you for their commands. Pyrenees have a large coat, a long coat. It's a double coat which means they can survive outside more or less all year round. You can groom them as much as you like or as little as you like. The major problem with the coat is things like sticky buds. Sticky buds are hard for them to get out themselves. They, too, they often chew them out if they can reach them. It's about the only thing that messes their coat up that they really can't deal with. If it's mud, it dries, it falls off. You can groom them often or little, but if you're going to take them in the show ring, it's often quite useful to have them clean. Uh, but generally their coats are not bad. They look a little scruffy on times, but they're, they're a pet dog. Pyrenees tend not to slobber. There are some that do, but you tend to have nice tight mouths uh, with this breed and therefore slobbering is less of an issue, well, unless you're teasing them with a piece of meat or something and then you pay the price because they slobber everywhere. Um, but generally, no, these dogs do not slobber. One interesting feature about the breed is the double dew claws at the back, which are generally believed to help them up and over the mountains. Not always sure that's the case because they are claws, not toes. Not to be removed if you want to show them, by the way. Standard um, medical checks for Pyrenees are hips and elbows, is what they look for these days. Uh, if you're going to breeding. There are other issues um, that the breed suffers from. There are some cancers and there are some popping hocks where the uh, ankle pushes through. Um, tend to keep an eye on those. Um, if you've got a fit dog and you keep it exercised, most of the other bits and pieces aren't an issue. But as I say, the main ones for breeders are hips and elbows. There's no general hereditary diseases. Um, there is a little bit of cancer, but there are in a number of dogs. Um, we, unfortunately, we lost our old girl from a, a cancer around the shoulder. Um, so we know a bit about the cancer, but they, they generally, they'll have lumps and bumps, um, as do any older dog. Advice for someone looking at a Pyrenean? Um, research, research and research again. Um, go to Discover Dogs, go to Crufts, go to a number of shows just to see the dogs. See how, A, big they are, because they're a giant breed. Uh, B, see how imposing they are, because if you get a, a dominant boy, you'll soon know it. Um, and you ask questions, go to breed clubs, go to breeders, ask the right questions like, you know, how long do they live? what exercises they need, what food have I got to feed them, because as a puppy they'll eat you out of house and home, but when they get, become an adult, they don't. 
you need to understand about the not coming back aspect of this breed because it's important. If you want a dog that you go heel, heels, a Pyrenees is not the one for you. Go and get a Bernese or a German Shepherd or something like that. But if you want a nice dog that's comfortable to walk with you, whatever fast or slow you do, they're not a bad dog. Yeah, they're a little large for the house, but if you provide you're not house proud, it's fine. The standard questions to ask a breeder when you're looking for a puppy with a Pyrenean is, is it a puppy that looks like it's going to stand up for itself? You do not want a shy one of these. You do not want the one that backs away because you've got to then start working on building its confidence up. You're looking for a confident dog. This is a mountain dog. This is a livestock guardian. They need to be brave and confident. So that's what you're looking for within a puppy. The one thing to remember about Pyrenees is you buy a little white fluffy toy effectively. They're lovely little puppies. Um, but they end up somewhere between 50 and 65 kilos. With an awful lot of independence, they don't need you generally. So you need to make sure that you work them into your home. You do the obedience, you do the training, you do the exercise, you do the proper feeding regime. Okay. And you'll have a nice dog. You won't have one that comes back, but you'll have a lovely dog. <laughs> mm -hmm.